Right, I've gone back to just having random colour. Um, so I've just got colour set up, and I'm randomising it using a vary source property. Um, I'm adding more red at the moment, just like that, so it's a bit pinkier. I'll just go back to zero, and we'll just get random colours. Um, so I think if I make that 0.8, they'd be quite white. So you can play around with that sort of stuff. And if I made them minus 0.8, they'd be very dark. Yeah, that's quite nice, isn't it? Um, I might do that. Uh, maybe minus 0.5. There we go. Not so. What I like to do next is uh, have these change over time. So um, either change color or change size um, and how do we go about that well there are a couple of ways of doing it one there is a node that does it which is called age set particle property from age um, now this is a post simulate node you put it afterwards you can see that it's got particles in particles out so you pipe that in that and now nothing happens so we have to say the property we want to change so if I want to change color like that oops got to be not caps color and I'll have to change my values to match the data that we've got for our color which will be an RGB 4 so a float 4 and um, here before when we did it over there, we changed that. It errored until I changed the minimum value, remember. Um, here it doesn't do it. What it's all done, because these are auto ports, It's this one's automatically going, oh, if you're that, I should be this as well. Um, it's worth going in and just hard doing those. See, the, the little line means it's an auto port. It, sometimes you can get some little weirdness going on, but... Um, it's good just to have those like that. So if I now hit play, uh, no, that's not working, but nothing's happening. And that is because they really should be not there because all this is set to zero. This is because these are set to live forever, so they don't have an age property. So we have to go back to our source particles, turn off age. Let's make it. Uh, I'm going to make it 10 seconds. So should have a full effect at 250 because I'm 25 frames per second so now when we hit play you see nothing which is what we expect because these are all set to nothing so I'll put those at 1 and 1 and now so that's the alpha channel that last one that RGBA there so now they're all black so I can say right let's make you go blue for the duration of your lifespan and you can see there you can have more of a drop off. Uh, it's a bit 20. Actually, it's the other way around, isn't it? So that makes it happen quicker. I want 0.5. Yep, so they get bluer slower. Now, this is all great, um, but only works if you've got age, if you've turned it on on your source particle and you've defined an age I mean you could define the age as the length of the simulation you want to do it so they don't die um, one of the things I'm not too keen on using this one uh, because I've generated all these colors here they've been simulated then I'm wiping them all out and reapplying colors that seems to me like double calculation that I don't really need to do um, this works very good with caches as well. You could put a cache into that. So if you cached them out, you could come in and then change it, and then that would be nice and quick. Um, but there is another way of doing it, um, which is what I'm going to show you now. So let's just plug that back in. Should go back to our random colors. There we go. Um, so we have an influence. We can use influences to affect the simulation. And we have one called modify. Modify. Um, and how this works is you basically you give it a property. So I'm going to say color. 
and um, because it's a color property I've got to change my value so let's just open that up zoom in a bit value right click that just change it to a float 4 you get that um, so now what I'm saying is over time every frame basically modify the color property using this operation here so it's only going to replace it so if I did if I plug that in to my influence starts off we've got color on frame one but they all go back and disappear and that's because it's all set to zero so if I put that one back to one you'll see that they will all just start getting darker and darker and darker and darker because this is all set to zero so we're replacing that value with one um, I generally like to use multiply over the top so at the moment if you did multiply they would do the same thing again because if you multiply zero anything by zero you end up with zero so they're just going to get blacker and blacker um, if I put all these to one if you multiply anything by one it doesn't change one times ten is ten so they'll just stay the same if I add say 1.5 to the red they're all going to get pinker over time and if I do a point say 25 it's going to slowly suck the color the pink out the red out of it so they'll get bluer and greener um, and I prefer this because obviously it's pre the simulation you're not already calculating color then recalculating it again um, and we've got some rate controls here so you know we can make it go slower same thing as before um, I haven't got clamp to work so I'm not sure how that doesn't seem to work when I turn it on if I do that and clamp it at one See, nothing happens for some reason. Um, and I've changed, tried changing those values, and it, you know, to float fours and stuff, and it doesn't seem, it seems to error. Anyway, um, so changing the color over time, doing that, they're all getting bluer. So I could go in here and in the red sort of start off in a more of a red world and then they'll slowly get bluer and cooler which is quite nice um, if you want to have them based on age so if I turn on age here at the moment it will just ignore it and carry on as it was but you can add an influence to an influence and we can add a modulate and a modulate influence where is it oh, I spelled it wrong modulate there we go um, allows you to as it sort of says modulate an influence another influence based on another property so I can plug that in there do this to point age and uh, if I hit play you see it takes a lot longer and in fact doesn't really seem to do it. If I turn on point age, can't remember. Uh, no, I've still got live forever turn on, that's why. Let's go back. So there we go. They're getting bluer. But they're actually getting bluer. They should only get bluer at 250, but they're not. And that's because my modulate influence is set to a min max of one. So anything over one, the age of one will be go blue but my lifespan is 10 so if I put that to 10 we can do that and you can see it will slowly modulate the blue and only those sort of final ones of the full sort of bluishness so that's pretty good um, and you don't have to sort of do that to um, speak all of a sudden um, color you can do it to any of the properties that are on a particle and um, if you want to find out what the properties are if you go to the after a simulate particle right click and go add watch point this shows you the data that's flowing through so we've got point age point age limit which is how old it's allowed to live 
point bounciness, point component. I'm not 100% sure what that one is. I think it's just its objectiveness. Um, point dead, which we're not using. Uh, point position, so you could. What if you could do that? Mm, might be weird. Uh, point size and point velocity. Um, so let's try a point size. So point underscore size. Um, leaving these open will slow your simulation down. Remove which point. And also, I was reading today that um, there's a new option. This resume after escape termination, which sort of doesn't doesn't work. If it's on, it slows your simulations down slightly because it stores the simulation in RAM. So if you turn that off, your simulations will be quicker. Um, right. So let's just, I'm going to make a new modifier, just because I don't have to go through and modify my influence. I'm going to do point size, like that, and I'm going to multiply it. I'm going to plug that in. So now I've got that one. And I'm going to do a point. Eight. So I'm multiplying by 0.8 every frame, so it's going to get smaller by 0.2. And as you can see, they're getting smaller. There we go. So that's good. Uh, what if, if control C and then B, that one. So let's do the point age on this again. and. I'm going to do a maximum of what size is it at the moment? A point 0.1. So I'm going to do, well, I can just leave that as a max of that. I'm going to do that at point zero, zero 0.01. Actually, do it point zero 0.05. So fingers crossed. Have I plug that in? Yeah, my. Um, they should get to a certain size stop. Uh, which I think they are doing, are they? No, they're not. So that's not working. Um, let me try that at point 0.1. Max size is point 0.1. Mm, nope. So these clamps, I'm not 100% sure how they work. I have to look into them. Um, I did it that way around. Anyway, let's ignore that. It's not quite working. I have to look into that a bit further. So, let's just hold down Control and Alt. Just cut through that. So, there we go. I'm modulating them over time, changing the colours. Um, in fact, I could just turn that off actually, and it'll work a bit quicker. So there we go, they're getting bluer, they're getting smaller. So that's the modifier influence.